All right. So welcome to today's podcast. My name is Scott Engler. I'm your host. I'm a published author and thought leader on contemporary job search strategies and really optimizing optimizing LinkedIn and creating a strong professional brand to land your next position. So today is part three of a three part series I've been doing for the last few weeks on the three components to creating a strong personal brand on LinkedIn. And today is going to be into action. So just to recap, if you, if you're new or, you know, just listening to this one, uh, the first two were focused on who you are. So really talking about who you are, why you do what you do. And then last week was really focused on what you do and how to, what I called bragging appropriately and learning uh, ways that have been effective for myself and clients and that I've learned from experts in recruiting and career development on how to um, brag appropriately to to really attract new job opportunities. So today what I want to talk about is, is the into action part. Now, most of the people that I work with uh, on, you know, helping them on LinkedIn and, and finding a new job, uh, they're, they're okay with starting to make changes and while there's a, a learning curve to like how to digitally brand yourself and really speak in a way you know that could help you even in transitioning different industries or roles it's another thing for people to continue to stay consistent and follow through and one of the things that most people don't do is they don't they don't show themselves online. They don't, they don't continue to, and what I mean by that is they're not showing how they're, they are an expert or thought leader in what their field is. They're not taking the time to post content or do whatever it is they do to be effect, uh, to use LinkedIn effectively to network and really get out there and stay active. And so that's what I really want to talk about today. Uh, because as, as, uh, as Brian Tracy says, a brand refers to the perceived image and subsequent emotional response to a company, its products and its services. So if you want to create a strong professional brand, and if you want to invoke an emotional response to attract better job opportunities, really you need it you need to be active and you need to be visible and you need to be out there so what i'd like to talk about are first i'd like to go go over a few of the things that brian tracy says because i really think they're pertinent and then i could really speak on how they apply to linkedin so one of them is specialization now if you specialize in something do you think it's more effective to just say you specialize it or or in it or to actually demonstrate and show how you specialize in it? So what would be, you know, put yourself on the other end of the stick. If you're a recruiter and you're looking for top talent, who's going to stand out more to you? The person that just says it on their profile or the person that's actually showing cutting edge work they've done or information and being active on the site posting in relevant groups or on their feed and really demonstrating why they are the, you know, unique in what they do and how they specialize what they do. Because the truth is, is branding is a process. Effectively communicating is an ongoing process and it takes a while for things to, to sometimes click, right? If you ever known, like maybe you've knew, you know, someone in your social circle and like, it wasn't till like the, you know, maybe the 10th, 20th, 30th time you heard them talking about something where something just kind of clicked or you could see them in a different light um, as they were talking about something specific. And not only that, but you need to stay consistent because if you aren't being visible or active, then you're not being seen and you're going to, people are going to forget you. It's, it's, it's just the truth. You know, if you're not going to any events or networking groups, or if you were going to one, and you're just not showing up, then, you know, you're going to slowly dissipate and people are going to forget about you and the services you offer or, or what you're trying to do. Uh, the same holds true to LinkedIn. It's just an online networking form. Really? That's what it is. It's the largest professional networking site in the world. 
And so how do you show up and are, are you showing up consistently? And what I find is when I see, uh, you know, job seekers that are taking the time to share relevant articles, commenting on posts, liking things, uh, talking about what they do, finding creative ways to uh, communicate what it is they do. Those are the people that are that are going to that are successful. It's true. And so if you're not doing it, the first question is, why aren't you doing it? And the second question is, what could you do to feel authentic in this way? Right. You don't have to be a great writer and post articles on LinkedIn to be effective in this way. Right. So finding ways that you do feel good about it. Right. One of the things I talk about is when I work with clients privately is I have this thing called the LinkedIn power half hour. And one of it, one of the steps is like sharing things that feel good for you to do and are speaking to whomever it is that you want to be speaking to in an effective manner and adding value, right? Whatever the information is that you're sharing. And so when I say feeling good, if writing an article to you is, is extremely tedious and painful and it's not something you're naturally gifted at, then don't do that. You know, maybe you're better at something else. Like, uh, one of my, one of the guys that I, that I network with and I've done some work with, I write for his company. He's great at posting. He's great at just doing regular posts on his content. He's got a natural gift for it. He's got a much better gift at it than I do personally. And he does great. That's how he gets a lot of traction. He doesn't write many articles that I, that I see at least. He's all about posting and, and engaging and interacting and showing himself as an expert that way. So there's an example of, you know, something that he does really well and, and he sticks with it. He leads with that strength. So personality, you know, most people are, are shy enough to, to show themselves. But you know, when I work with clients, a lot of times there's that they're still working at a job. So there's that fear of getting caught uh, looking for work. And there's that fear of just, you know, for, for a lot of people of just being seen, right. And showing who you are, you don't have to be so stiff. You know, you could show your personality on LinkedIn and not everyone may agree with it. Or, you know, maybe, maybe you are more gregarious. Uh, maybe you're not, but be yourself, you know, be yourself on the site. One of my, my, mentors and favorite people in the career development space is JT O'Donnell. And if you watch her, if you look her up on LinkedIn, you'll see that she's very, you know, she's very friendly. She's got her own style. Uh, she makes, to me, she makes learning about job searching and all that stuff fun. And someone like Liz Ryan as well. She's very, uh, she is, she's unconventional. She's funny. She's fun. Uh, you'll read some of her posts or her, her profile. And these are top leaders in, in, these are some of the top leaders in the world and top most follow people in the world on LinkedIn. And they have, you know, built their brand in a way that's unique and, and it seems like authentic to them. Right? So you don't have to be some stiff either, you know, and just, just be who you are, you know, is a big one. And so, uh, the next one is, is really persistence. Right? And so this is one of the other laws of branding that, that Brian Tracy talks about. Most people, they start something and they don't, they don't finish. Or, you know, what's, what's really common is that people will start maybe getting kind of active on LinkedIn and posting or whatever. And then they aren't getting the immediate feedback that they thought they would. And so they stop. The truth is, is that I, in my opinion, networking digitally is much more challenging than networking in person. And the reason I feel this way is because it takes a little bit longer to develop trust and credibility and connection on LinkedIn, especially when, when people are using it all across the board. So they may see your post one month and then not see another one till the next month. There's all sorts of, of factors that tie into that. They can't really, you know, they're not seeing you in, in real life. It's not like a networking event you show up to every day. So, you know, personally, I think both are very powerful. I mean, LinkedIn is where over 95% of recruiters are. So I think it's one of those necessary evils for lack of a better word to, to be on there and to consistently be showing things. But, you know, for me, it's like, I'd also recommend to show up places where you can network more effectively and more efficiently as well. Um, 
but just getting those habits, right? It's, it's all about those habits and persistence. And I think one of the things that I found for me and other people that I've seen uh, to be, that have been more successful on using LinkedIn is that they don't just quit because they're not getting 30 likes on their first post. And, and it, you know, you just have to work through some of that stuff. That's what, you know, what I've had to do is there's plenty of articles and posts I've shared where I get literally no response. And sometimes I'll go like weeks without really getting too much engagement and interaction. And I don't really know why, uh, you know, I feel like I'm still sharing relevant information and I'm doing, doing the same deal. Uh, it just is what it is. And then some months it's like everything I'm posting is getting tons of traction and, and likes and engagement. And, you know, for me, I've just had to stay consistent with it. So, so the persistence is a really, really key component that I wanted to address because it, it is, it is very powerful be, and especially because most people aren't. Um, and then the last one I wanted to talk about is to is to just um, is the leadership component. So you don't have to be a leader for say, but you could be the leader of your own LinkedIn, right? You could be the leader of your own content. You could be taking charge. I, I see this as more of assertiveness. And so even if you're not, you know, Mr. Out there, spokesperson, whatever, you could still find ways to uh, stay, stay out there and be a leader in what it is you do. Let's say for instance, you do web development and maybe you're not the most extroverted person in the world, and, but you do great work. You could always just share what you're working on, on LinkedIn and share here, here's what I'm working on for this company, or, you know, here's what I've done. Uh, and you know, this is how I've contributed to this and I'm really excited about it. So it's like showcase your work in that way and talk about it in that way, because that's really what you do best anyway. You know, and that's where I find with people that may be a little bit more on the introverted side, that's where the, they really shine is by doing stuff like that. So just, just find ways that you could really optimize and capitalize on your strengths would be, would be my, my, uh, main point here. And it just takes you taking a little more time to process and allowing for creativity to flow through. And most people will just start to make excuses and to get consequent, consequently get stuck. So if you're listening to this, consider ways that you could maybe take some time to write out ideas. You know, what could I do on LinkedIn or even just ask questions. And sometimes the answers will be revealed later. <laughs> of what you could do personally that would feel good for you to really be into action and to, cons you know, to do something that would feel like you could do it consistently and keep it up, you know, and that's part of the part of the thing. If you're going to do something that's extremely painful, like writing an article, if you don't like writing articles at all, then you're not going to be persistent and consistent with it. So start with something that is going to feel good, but also realize that it is going to take a commitment on your part to stay consistent with it. Cause even, you know, I'll be honest, even for me with writing, it's, there's still a resistance there to doing some of these things. It's not like I wake up just super inspired every day to write or super inspired every day to do podcasts. I just put it in my schedule and I've made a routine and habit out of doing it. So regardless of how I'm feeling in the moment, I I'm already going to do it right. One of my, one of my favorite quotes from this book by Stephen Pressfield, the, the war of art is he said that, um, this famous writer, and I forgot who the writer's name was interviewed. And they're like, you know, when do you find your, like, how, or, or how do you find your inspiration? And when do you, you know, like, how does it play into you writing? He's like, it's simple. I find my inspiration every morning at 9am. <laughs> and what the writer meant by this was that, he doesn't feel inspired every time is that he just dedicated that time to writing every day, regardless of the resistance that he felt to it. So just, you know, the reason I'm mentioning that is because it's, it's helpful to understand that you will feel resistance, that great things and great results don't happen just without any challenge, right? That, that you, there is a level, it should feel good, but there also will be resistance that you're going to experience. So, find ways that you can build the right habits so you could stay consistent and in being into action on LinkedIn to 
create this even stronger brand and attract better job opportunities. So that's part three. Uh, if you haven't yet, I'm going to put part two in the, in the box where above on the right. So you could check out that one. Then of course, check out the first one. I'd recommend going in order if you could, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Please, if you're liking what you hear and you want to get updated on more content, you could hit the subscribe button for me. Uh, and the last thing is if you're really the kind of person that understands that accountability is huge and you'd want to have somebody that really specializes in this specific area and has now helped thousands of job seekers attract more opportunities. Uh, my specialization is, is really working with executives, VPs, C CEO, COO, CMOs that are still working at a job and how to artfully create more opportunities while they're still at that job and to do so in a much more effective and efficient manner uh, while they're still at the job, optimizing the things that they are doing. Uh, so they're only putting in a couple hours compared to 10 to 15 hours to attract better opportunities. So if that sounds like something you want, I'm going to put a, a way that you could reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, what, I re what I request is put serious inquiry in the heading in your message. And again, I'm going to put this in the YouTube box, but um, otherwise there's a good chance that I won't even see that your message to me on LinkedIn. So if that does sound like something that you'd be interested in, uh, please do reach out to me on LinkedIn. Otherwise, what my takeaway for you guys is to ask yourself, what could I do differently from now on so that people will think of me all the time? So what could I do differently to separate myself? So that's the takeaway I want to to give you guys is into action. What can I do differently from now on? So people will think of me in these good ways as being distinctive, um, is specializing in something as being a leader, as being unique and distinct in what I do. What are some things that I could do? So asking yourself that question and I wish everyone success.